to my channel. Um, be sure to check me out at laquanda.com for the blog and the podcast and find me on Instagram at laquanda. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, as many of you know, I am a therapist and so I like to do a lot of things that are um, really therapeutic for me and not necessarily talking um, in front of a person about my problems. So one of the things that I um, get back into is skating. So you know I'm a beginner skater. Um, I haven't skated this much since I was a child. Um, but in the area that I live in, the skate, the roller skating rinks are far away. And there's some maybe um, within 30 minutes, but the rest of them are within an hour drive for me. So I decided I was gonna skate outside. Well, the problem with that is I, um, it's allergy season and I have severe asthma. And so now if I go outside, it's so much pollen that I have all these reactions with my skin and my breathing. And so I was looking for a way that I could roller skate safely in my own home. Problem, da -da! not the dog, carpet. So this is a tip. For anyone who has um, carpet and they are looking for um, to be able to skate in their homes. So I'm going to grab some gloves. So the thing that I needed was a harder surface to skate on. A harder and sturdy surface. And so I started researching dance floors. And so in actual... Um, flooring that you can put together and that is also an option that you can go to your local home store and buy a box of flooring that you can snap together and that's an option for you to create a little space but I wanted more space um, and I wanted something that I can disassemble and put back together on the weekends so I thought about lumber and particle board so let me show you what I got This is one of the boards that, I, that I've gotten. As you can see, it's almost um, as tall as I am. It is two feet by four feet. If you have the vehicle and you can um, transport it, they do have some that are four feet by eight if you have that space and you can transport it to and fro. But I was transporting this by myself, so a two feet by um, four feet was good good enough for me and this is like five eighths of an inch thick and so when I was looking at the boards I put the boards on the floor um, inside of the stores to make sure there weren't any warps because I didn't want a board that had a lot of um, humps in it even though I do have some with that and that's good for me because I normally skate outside and so that surface um, having not such a smooth surface works there is some resistance to this so it's not completely smooth and that was something else that i was looking for um one thing when handling this you want to make sure you have gloves so you don't get splinters i these are just regular gloves but i actually have work gloves with non-slip um padding on it that i just couldn't find and so and you know there's joshua and there's good old daisy um, move please and so what I do um, to put my floor down is I just excuse me excuse me about nine nine boards and I'm normally bringing the boards from this end and so I normally connect them facing in this direction and I just walk them up and push them together. Now this board, I can tell, has a little hump in it. And so if you find a board that has a little hump in it, my recommendation is to turn it over and put it like towards the outside. 
and see we turned it over put it towards the outside and now that hump isn't isn't um gonna affect my scaling and so you can walk back and forth or waddle back and forth on the board to make sure you're not getting a lot of movement and i'm going to grab a second board I'm going to move this stack over. They are heavy. They are very heavy. So this is not light. Oh, there we go. There's something underneath. Oh, there it is. There we go. So that's down right there. Now, the thing that Sorry, Josh is walking through. The thing that you will notice when you put your boards down is that there are going to be gaps um, in between your boards. Sometimes that cannot be helped. Um, for me, I do like the gaps there because again, it trains me for when I'm outside and I'm skating, learning how to skate over cracks in the sidewalk or in the road. Um, but here is a tip these things because you're skating on them they can um shift a little they're not going to shift a lot but they will shift some and here's a, a tip that you can use to create more resistance on the back of your um your board um, so they're not sliding or moving as much as much against the carpet buy some non-slip shelf liner and if you're wondering what this is this is the stuff that you line shelves with like maybe your um your kitchen cabinets um to keep your dishes from sliding and so they they would stay in place if you're like grabbing a bowl out all the bowls won't come along because this is there so you can put this and it's you can see it's see-through so it's not going to impact the um the back of the board so what i recommend is that you put this on um the back of your on um, one side of your board and then secure it and i would be mindful about how you secure it because you don't want to put something that's so thick on there that it's going to um impact um your surface so much so there is i use a craft glue and let me show you not necessarily the glue i use a craft glue and one of these sponge one of these sponge brushes and it has like a little end on it that you can easily come on let me rip this open so you can see has a little end on it so you can easily smooth out your your craft glue and allow that that to dry now you're seeing these in my living room because i have not transported them to my bedroom underneath my bed which is where all of them will go i have nine in total um you're probably thinking you're going to carry every last one of those to your bedroom no i am going to get furniture sliders yes furniture sliders and put them in the corner and I'm going to slide them down my hallway and slide them under the bed. And so that's a great tip to moving them. You want to probably get the heavy duty furniture gliders because those are going to help. So let's just get to the meat and potatoes. Um, you know, skating on the surface. I treat this as if I'm skating on any surface. I have my gear on because I have fallen. And plus I have two very large dolls who are walking around. As you can see, there's Josh. Daisy's over here by my foot. If they hear anything come near that door, regardless if I'm skating or not, they are going to jump up and go after that door. And if I'm in the way, I'm hitting the ground. So I, I gear up.
Okay, so I'm all geared up. And so one thing that you can do that I love about this idea is because I have, I have nine, I can have them where it's three in a row, one, two, three, and I can do some, some drills or work on some things in that small space, or I can extend them longer out that it give me a larger surface and I can practice things like bubbles and try to patch the scissors. I'm trying to um, get the two, what is it, two toe turn or two point turn or two skate turn, whatever it's called. I'm trying to do that, but doing, having it where I can shift it around, that's the thing that I love about this versus the boards that you have to snap together. It's because when I want to practice something that I've seen on YouTube, I can just move my boards around real quick and then I'm able to um to to do it. So let's do um some skating on the floor. just a little bit of what I may do inside my home um, thanks to this quick little hack on how to cover up your carpet so you can skate this is great for new beginners uh, excuse me new beginners for beginners and you want to do some techniques in the comfort of your home and you don't have the surface as well as kids who um, on a rainy day can't go outside and they just want to skate and you can just have a few boards for them and they can practice their techniques there. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Appreciate you much. Bye.